Symbols have become ubiquitous in our modern lives. Modern symbols are used as visual communicators for computers, signs, trademarks, and commerce. As you can probably imagine, today's symbols aren't a new invention. From the prehistoric symbols made by the Cro-Magnon people in France and Spain, to the early record-keeping symbols of the Sumerians of Mesopotamia, these people use symbols to preserve a thought or tell a story. These early symbols are what we call today pictographs. The function of a pictograph is to communicate an idea or story, and as these ancient societies evolved, their pictographs became more complex. Another term used to describe these prehistoric symbols is petroglyphs. The only difference is the word petroglyph means carved into stone, which describes the medium. Pictograms were not only used in the ancient world. We see them very often in today's world. Pictographs are used on signs to show where an airport is located. They are also used to show where public transportation is. If you are shopping, you might see pictograms such as those to show where an escalator or stairs might be. Pictograms are also used to communicate rules such as do not enter or do not park, and they are also used to show caution or danger. Another category is called ideograms. An ideogram represents a complete idea or concept. We have probably all seen the slippery floor ideogram. There are no words necessary. Most people will know what this means. Most people will also know what this means. This area or location is wheelchair accessible. Probably one of the most recognized ideograms is the red circle with a line through it. This is so universal that almost any pictogram or ideogram can be put inside of it. And of course, this list wouldn't be complete without mentioning emojis. Nowadays, most people have a smartphone capable of texting and sending emojis. Who hasn't ever sent a happy face or sad face or a heart? These are the top 10 emojis for 2021 as measured by Emojipedia. The loudly crying face was the number one emoji used. There's probably some meaning about society behind the loudly crying face as being number one, but we won't dive into that in this video. Today's term, symbol, which is the same in both German and English, comes from the Greek symbolon and meant identification mark. In ancient Greece, symbols were used among friends, relatives, and family members as an identification mark. When two people had to be apart for a long period of time, they would take a small clay plate or a ring or some other small personal object and break it into two pieces. Each person would take half and these two pieces symbolized their connection. If, after many years or even decades of being apart, when they met again, they could join together the two pieces and thereby confirming the identity of the other person. Also, if they were not going to be together, but decided to send a representative, the representative was given the piece to show the relative, friend, or family member so that trust could be extended to the unknown person. Because of this usage, the term symbol had two values. First, something visible because of the two pieces and something invisible, which was the connection to the other person. So, the term symbol became understood as a visible sign for an invisible reality. This is how the original meaning and understanding of the term symbol came about. Another term used to make something visible is the allegory. An allegory is a story, poem, or picture that can be interpreted to reveal a hidden meaning. Instead of describing a particular lesson, the meaning of the lesson is converted into a picture or story and then called an allegory. An example of an allegory is the tortoise and the hare. 
The story tells of a slow and steady tortoise in a race with an overconfident hare. Because of his overconfidence, the hare decides to lay down for a nap, and the tortoise slowly passes him and wins the race. The message behind the story is that slow and steady is the best way to win a race. Another children's book by Dr. Seuss called The Sneetches is a story of two groups of creatures, one group who had stars on their bellies and one group who did not. The star-bellied Sneetches would brag that they are the best kind of Sneetches because of their stars. They were very arrogant and felt superior. After the non-starred Sneetches got a chance to gain stars, the starred Sneetches no longer felt superior. Throughout the story, the Sneetches would switch back and forth from starred to unstarred until they realized the foolishness of their ways. This allegorical story explores the stupidity of racism and divisive feelings and shows how costly prejudice can be. Both the tortoise and the hare and the Sneetches are both examples of allegorical stories. So, we have talked about symbols and allegories. So you might wonder, what's the difference between a symbol and an allegory? An allegory is a narrative or visual representation in which a character, place, or event can be interpreted to represent a hidden meaning. This means that the story or event can only be understood through a series of interpretive steps by putting the individual pictures or events together to form the idea as a whole. So an allegory is interpreted from the different pictures or events. A symbol represents something unique and complete. A symbol is not divided into individual values that need to be put together. The symbols of the spiritual teaching provided by Billy Meyer are distinct and unique and embody an invisible reality that conveys something definite. The symbols of the spiritual teaching work as a bridge to understanding something invisible that can be recognized. The symbols that we are about to explore are not allegories, pictograms, or ideograms. They are symbols that are connected to very specific thinking and feeling experiences. During this part of the video, the symbols will be displayed and then there will be a brief pause. This will give you time to register the symbol in your mind and then notice what you think or how you feel for each of the symbols. During this exercise, Take a moment to notice how you feel. Each of these symbols should elicit some type of feeling within yourself. This is the symbol for nature. This is the symbol for meditation and immersion. It has what could be an arch or pagoda. This is the symbol for confusion, some jumbled lines without order. This is the symbol for feeling. This feeling is from the German word fühlen, which means feeling from touch. It has a circle in the center with what looks like some small leaves along with some larger leaves on the outside. This is a symbol for empathy. This is similar to the symbol for feeling, except it has some smaller leaves in between the larger ones. This is the symbol for the material consciousness. Notice that it has a single circle with a dot in the center. This is the symbol for the material subconsciousness. Notice that it has two circles with a dot in the center. And this is the symbol for the material central consciousness. If you want to know more about the material consciousness, you can click the link at the top of the screen to see Consciousness, How Does It Work, Part 1, or view the video later in the Billy Meyer Books YouTube video library.
This is the symbol for thoughts. Notice how this symbol has three circles around a center, similar to the consciousness ones, along with four triangles pointing inwards and four triangles pointing outwards. This is the symbol for freedom. This is the symbol for emotion. It has arrows pointing outwards from the center, along with three lightning bolt arrows reaching further outwards. It also has a radiating effect with lines similar to the Wi-Fi or wireless pictogram. This is the symbol for birth. It has three circles, a common theme. In the center circle, it has three waves, each with seven peaks, and it has lines pointing outwards towards 14 smaller circles, and it also has 14 thicker half circles around the larger middle circle. This is the symbol for community. Here again, we have the three individual circles, that are grouped together in a house or a box. This is the symbol for honesty. It has three inner circles with lines or spokes and two arrows pointing inwards. This is the symbol for personality. There are two inner circles with four large diamond structures piercing the first circle and pointing towards the inner and has four arms that seem like they are blocking the outside. This is the symbol for idea. This is the symbol for forgiveness. This symbol has a very thick inner wall, along with lines showing a radiating outwards, and seven large diamond structures pointing inwards. This is the symbol for evolution. There are stairs that ascend upwards, making up a body which is connected to a head and arms. There are those waves again with seven peaks and there are seven of them, three on each side and one at the bottom. This is the symbol for human being. You can see a torso, head and two arms. This is the symbol for laughter. I like this one. The two bottom half circles almost form a smile. This is the symbol for love. There is a center circle with two connected rings, a wave with three peaks, and an arrow pointing up. On either side, are two half circles with arrows pointing inwards. This is the symbol for tolerance. This has three wheels, each with a different number of spokes, and they are touching each other. The lines appear to show a vibration or friction between the wheels. This is the symbol for happiness. This is one of the few color symbols Billy has made. This is the symbol for discipline. There are two circles enclosing some random lines.
This is the symbol for depression. It has lines or arcs that are flowing inwards. It also has four thick walls around the outside. Now we move into some of the more powerful symbols representing feelings or emotions. Remember, see what you notice inside yourself when these symbols are displayed. See if you can notice or recognize what feelings arise inside of you. This is the symbol for fault or guilt. Notice the four prominent triangles pointing inwards. This is the symbol for intrigue. There's a lightning bolt in the center with many arrows pointing inwards. This is the symbol for jealousy. Notice again the lightning bolts at the base with arrows pointing up. This is the symbol for anger. This is the symbol for killing. It has a strike you down type of feeling. This is the symbol for hatred. This is the symbol for life. It's similar to a leaf or a tree with its branches growing upwards. This is a symbol for dying. Notice how it's almost the opposite of the symbol for life. The next symbol is the symbol for death. It's similar to the well-known peace symbol. So if you can, try and ignore the connection to the peace symbol in your mind and just look at the symbol neutrally and try and see what feelings come up. This is the symbol for death. How does it make you feel? This is the symbol for unpeace or non-peaceful. It has the familiar lightning bolts coming up from the ground leading to the death symbol. This is the symbol for war. This is the symbol for the tree of life. And this is the symbol for existence. Both of these symbols have the same qualities as the symbol for life. This symbol should give you a completely different feeling than this symbol. This is the symbol for peace. This is another one of the colored symbols Billy has made. Notice the growth from the ground, the symbol of existence in the middle, a balance between two circles and the many leaves or stalks growing from all of this. The old peace symbol has been around since 1958 when it was created by British artist Gerald Holtham. Gerald created the symbol for the first Easter March in London, which was protesting a nuclear weapons research facility in Aldermaston, a small town in Berkshire, England. The old peace symbol design was based on two letters, an N and a D, which stood for nuclear disarmament. 
However, the N and the D were not normal characters. They came from a system of communication called flag semaphore. Flag semaphore was a system of conveying information at a distance using handheld flags for visual signals. These are the international flag semaphore signals. Gerald used the flag semaphore signals for N and for D, which stood for nuclear disarmament, and superimposed them to create the initial symbol. Then a circle was added to complete the symbol. This became the symbol for the campaign for nuclear disarmament in Britain. Unfortunately, and probably unknowingly, Gerald Holtham intended to create a symbol for nuclear disarmament, but ended up creating a symbol that means death. To make things worse, Gerald's symbol was adopted in the U.S. during the 1960s peace movements and became widely used during Woodstock and the anti-war protests of the Vietnam War in the late 60s and early 70s. So, what can we do now? Well, for the existing peace symbol, the most simple and easiest thing to do is to turn the symbol right side up. If you have a refrigerator magnet or a sticker or a sign, just turn the symbol right side up. The best thing is to use the correct peace symbol. When people ask about the upside down peace symbol, tell them a little bit about the reasons behind it and how symbols impact our lives and affect our thoughts and feelings. From this video, you should now have some experience on what thoughts and feelings arise in you when you view different symbols. And finally, peace in a country or in a society or in a community always begins with the individual. It's not possible to bring peace to the world or even to your own town or local community without having peace in your own life. Start on a small scale. Create and develop peace within yourself within your personal environment and in your own home. Start small. We can begin with creating peace within ourselves, with our relatives and with our friends. Then slowly with neighbors, acquaintances, co-workers and everyday encounters with other human beings. World peace must begin on a small scale and then continue to expand. And these efforts must always continue regardless of the world situation.